Are we live? Are we good? Yeah, exciting stuff. Woo! Welcome everybody. Welcome to the uh, Stormers, DHL Stormers Six Gun Grill Steak Masterclass. I'm so pumped for tonight. I'm really, really excited. I've got some amazing guests with me. Woo! Yes. Because you got that right. Yes. <laughs> I practiced that ten times. <laughs> Um, the guys are, I think, more excited because they've been cooped up for so long, so they're pretty pumped to be out of their houses as well. Um, before we get started, just to introduce you, we've got Scott and Tabani, uh, Stormers rugby player, Chris Vazell, Stormers rugby player, SAFTA award winning entrepreneur, stand up comedian, presenter, lifesaver, Superman, he does it all, Seven Gazi. You haven't mentioned that we're your friends. Yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. We're your friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is weird. You could have mentioned that we're friends. Are you kidding me? I didn't want to use that yet. It's so <laughs> early. Uh, but awesome, guys. Thank you so much for coming through. Thank to join me tonight. Very, 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 very cool. Um, just before we get started, we know that uh, everybody's very paranoid about the COVID thing. So just so that you know, all precautions have been taken. Everybody's temperatures have been tested. The entire area has been sanitized. Everybody is masked up. All the crew, all the staff, everybody is squeaky clean. And we are compliant and good to go. Um, tonight, we've got some awesome prizes up for grabs. So please don't forget to make comments, ask questions. You can ask the guys what they've been up to. Um, ask me questions while we're cooking if you're not sure. Um, there's some amazing prize. We've got a Stormers rugby jersey. I don't know about you boys in the hotel if you'd be too chuffed with that. Um, we've got a six gun grill hamper and we've got a rare, grunt grill, rare, rare grill hamper up for grabs as well. So, pumped. Thank you, everybody, whoever's online and watching. <coughs> whether you're cooking along or whether you're watching, I uh, hope you have a great evening with us. Uh, tonight, we're going to be doing a steak masterclass where I'm going to explain to you about the different cuts of beef that we have um, how we're going to cook them the whole general idea tonight is uh, we can all cook a steak we all bra we all eat, eat lots of meat in this country i know these boys do and the whole idea is that from time to time we can bugger it up and get it wrong so after tonight after this master class hopefully the idea is that you never get it wrong again uh, too often you get that guy at the grill the guy that's holding the tongs i call him ted turner and he's full of line lager and he's uh, cracking jokes and he's just whipping steaks over and uh, your steak's been cooked horribly because the one side's raw and the other side's well done. So the idea is tonight is to cook the perfect steak and not to bugger it up. I'm gonna ooh, catch I you thought you, I thought you were amazing. I thought you were amazing. What did you think I about thought, that? I thought you were, I thought you were okay, amazing. You guys ready to start from the Let's beginning? Let's do this. <laughs> nice, nice intro. I so loved that. Great. I thought that was amazing. Yeah. Gentlemen, we have got right. some beautiful oh, meat here for yeah, you tonight. We've got some mine with his Wagyu. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't say my surname. Didn't say it. Too bad. Mm, too bad. Hey, these two are complaining because I had a longer introduction. They got you finished more. my introduction with his the start of his introduction. <laughs> Maybe if I wasn't yeah. sure if I want to say after it. <laughs> Did you win any awards? Yeah. No. Oh. <laughs> he became a springbok. Hey. <laughs> All right, so what we've got here tonight, we've got a couple of different steaks. I'm sure that you've all, I'm hoping you've all got your steaks ready. Um, it's really, really important that you get your, your meat out uh, beforehand and get it to room temperature because some people like their meat blue, some people like their meat rare, some people like their meat medium rare or medium well. Uh, if you like your steak rare or blue, it's really important that you get your meat out before you start cooking so you get your meat to room temperature because if it goes onto a hot grill, and uh, you grill your meat, it's going to be cold in the center. So really important that you get your meat uh, uh, up to room temperature before cooking it. Other things that we're going to be looking at tonight are the two different cuts. I've got two different beautiful cuts here tonight. We've got some Wagyu, uh, which not everybody has access to, uh, which is a Japanese breed of cow. Uh, different steaks, different cuts, um, different steaks, different cuts, different breeds, different feeding regimes, different aging regimes, all make a difference to what you get on your plate at the end of the day um, so i'm hoping that with these two different cuts i can explain them and uh we can have a source <laughs> so the pernan is from eastern cape 
Um, it is grass-fed meat. It is not 100% Wagyu. You can only get 100% Wagyu in Japan. Um, so here what they do is they cross-breed it. The Perkins cross-breed with Angus, which is also very well known for the quality of its meat. Um, the other cut that we got is Angus cross Brahmin. Again, Angus well known for the quality of its meat, but the Brahmin would add bulk to the animal. So at the end of the day, this is a million, million rand business. So it's all about getting that, that quality of meat out to, to, to the consumer. Um, and we're all very, very picky about what we're spending our money on. So we want to know what it is that we're eating and what we're spending our money on, what we're putting into our bodies, essentially. Um, the two cuts that we have here tonight, we have a beautiful piece of ribeye. You can see the, the marbling on the ribeye. Uh, as I said earlier, it's a Wagyu. It's a cross Angus Wagyu. Um, and the difference between a Wagyu and a regular Angus is that it's got a, a massive amount of marbling in it. And that marbling is the fat veins that run through the meat, and they give it a lot of flavor. Um, and then this is a local uh, Brahmin, a Brahmin cross Angus, local co uh, crossbreed, that you will find in most supermarkets and what you guys will most be purchasing at your butcher. So something that we normally have on a day-to-day -day basis and then something a little bit special, <coughs> excuse me, that we can have. The, the Wagyu has been dry aged, so it's hung on the carcass and it's dry aged for, for 21, 28 days. Uh, the rump has been wet aged and that you'll, you'll be able to taste the difference between dry and wet. So his dry aged meat is more of a nuttier flavor, uh, but at the end of the day, they'll both be delicious. Let's go. Mm -hmm. delicious. Right, so what we're going to do, first thing we do, we're going to oil the meat up. We don't really need to oil the Wagyu because it has so much marbling and so much fat in it. But we're going to put a little bit of oil on the meat. We do not oil the, the, the pan because if we, oopsie, that wasn't oil. There you go. If we put oil, <laughs> if we put oil in the pan and then we throw the meat into an oil pan, we're going to get oil all over the place. So we oil the meat first. <laughs> yeah. meat all over the place. <laughs> So we're going to oil the, the steaks up and a little bit of this amazing oh, six gun seasoning. I'm sorry, I need to take this stuff. This is my ooh, addiction. This stuff, ooh, on your popcorn as well. Woo! <laughs> you put it in your popcorn. Yeah. Mm. Oh, this stuff's so good. So we get a little bit of seasoning on here. And while we're talking a bit of nonsense and we're getting the meat ready, we're getting our griddle pans or our pans fiery hot they must be smoking 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 hot because what we want we want the heat to hit that steak and we want caramelization caramelization is when you're burning the natural sugars and that gives you a much better flavor uh, caramelization is key to getting the best out of your steak so we want these things to be smoking hot as you can see this one is here this one we are going to get on the go Now the reason why I'm using two different pans, gentlemen, mm -hmm. we are using a griddle pan and we are using a flat pan. Not everybody has a griddle pan. So I'm going to do the rump in the flat pan and then I'm going to use the griddle pan for the Wagyu. Griddle pans are quite nice because they give the lines on the meat and it gets quite an intense uh, caramelization to the, the heat uh, when it hits the meat. Um, but as I say, not everybody has these in their kitchens. So I'm also going to use a flat pan, which most of us have. It's really important that you use a heavy base pan. Um, it's always nicer cooking on gas because cat gas is a constant heat. Um, but if you don't have this at your disposal, you'll be all right. It'll still be delicious. Um, so we're going to get these up nice and hot. Anybody have any questions for us? Huh? No, sir. Uh, what's the biggest mistake that people make when they make steak? Biggest mistake. The biggest mistake is not buying steak that has been matured properly. Um, and there's no reason why you cannot mature your own meat at home. So, for example, if you go to your butcher and you ask them to vacuum, it has to be vacuum packed, to vacuum pack a piece of meat, stick it into the bag and stick it into your kitchen, mark it three weeks from that time. And in three weeks time, you come to your fridge, pull out a piece of meat and it is no reason why it shouldn't be restaurant quality meat because the difference between an average steakhouse and a good steakhouse, they've taken the time to take care of their meat and age it properly. So that's what's so like green grill. Black ray grill. Oh, yes. oh, oh, yeah. Selfless punt. <laughs> at, yeah. at the ray grill, what is the most um, popular way that people request this thing? Probably medium rare. Sure. But uh, I medium think rare. I think different cuts can be <coughs> cooked at different temperatures. Um, a steak before it's a steak is a muscle. And depending on how that muscle has worked will depend on 
how that meat needs to be cooked. So for example, your steaks are all prime cuts that come off, off parts of the animal that don't do a lot of work. So they're muscles that don't work very hard and therefore can be cooked at a higher temperature over a lower period, uh, a short period of time. Whereas your forequarter cuts, your shoulder, your, your, your shank, your neck, these are all muscles that work really hard, they pull the weight of the animal. And those are cuts that would have to be cooked at a lower temperature over a longer period of time to get the best result out of your meat. So steaks, for example, your fillet does little to no work on the animal, hence the reason why it's also the least flavoursome, but why it's, why, at the same time why, why it's the, um, the most tender. Um, your sirloin, which we don't have here tonight, sits, runs parallel to the fillet on the animal. Also again, a cut that doesn't do a lot of work, but uh, has a, a more tightly grained uh, uh, muscle, so it does need to be aged, um, but it has the fat on it, so it has a lot more flavour. The rump, which we got here tonight, is sits on the boat itself. Does do a little bit more work. So for me, you know, your fillets and your sirloin, rare, blue, medium rare, max, it's perfect. Rump, for me, I'm happy to go more medium rare, closer to medium, because sometimes you've got that interconnective tissue that needs to be broken down and, and cooked through. You get a much better eating experience. The ribeye, which is one of the few steaks that comes from the forecourt of the animal, um, <coughs> for me, is similar to the rump and that it's got a lot of interconnected tissue and a lot of marbling. So by taking that a little bit further, you just break down that fat and that fascia that's in there, and that gives you a better eating experience as well. Let's see this thing. Shall we? Mm -hmm. All right, so for me, um, the guide to cooking a steak is for every centimeter of steak. So if we're working on, uh, most people are like jumping on a bike and it's easy, but the idea is that we don't overcook our steaks here. So what we're gonna do is for every centimeter of steak, that's how long it's gonna sit per side. So if your steak is two centimeters thick, it's gonna cook for two minutes. We're gonna flip it over and it's gonna cook for another two minutes. Um, the reason why I only do one turn is because um, I find then you're getting a nice consistent grill. Um, beautiful pink in the middle with chard on the outside. You're also not flipping it over, as I said earlier, constantly. Um, and it's, it's the best result. So, what we're going to do is, if you look at this cut here, is everybody, I hope everybody's ready, everybody's ready to go. Uh, we're going to go with this one on the, in the flat pan. And we are going to go, it's about two and a half centimeters thick. So we're going to shove that in the pan. And that's going to go for about two and a half centimeters. Now what happens when you put your meat into a hot pan, anything that comes close to heat or flame is trying to run away. So all the moisture and all the flavor and the juices are in the middle of that steak are now trying to get away from the heat and they're drawing up through the steak. And what you don't want to do is you don't want that stuff to come up to the top of the steak because if it does, then you've, you've overcooked the steak already. It's past medium. So it's, you've got to be very careful, <coughs> excuse me, that you don't leave it for too long because as soon as that moisture comes through the top of the steak, you've overcooked it. Oh, I feel a bit emotional now, guys. Look at that, I've got a sore throat. <coughs> It's a spice. It's, is it a spice? Is, it a, is that a spice? It is a spice. That is a six-gun grill spice. Yeah. yeah. Um, then I'm going to stick this on a little bit quicker, a little bit earlier, because like I say, I prefer my rump to be a little bit more, more medium rare, closer to medium. And then I'm going to chuck the, the Wagyu on afterwards, the ribeye. And we're going to get some beautiful caramelization and flavor out of that as well. Okay, so I'm always, uh, I've been ordering some uh, uh, rare grill at home. Yeah. Where do you get your meat? So I try to support the local guys. For, for example, this uh, beautiful piece of rump I get from a butcher down the road for me, Baptist from Meet the Butcher. Small little independent butcher. He's an amazing guy. He's very, very passionate about his, his meat. Um, the Wagyu I get from Blake's uh, Fine Foods, which is from the Pernan Farm, so it comes directly from the farm. Um, I try to shop around and support the small, uh, the small guys, you know, the small farmers that are doing specialized stuff, the small butchers. Um, and, and it's kind of working for me, I suppose, at the moment. <laughs> well, you've won awards for your steak, my butt. <laughs> I didn't want to say that loud. It's very modest, guys. Red Grill has won best steak a numerous amount of times. All right, we're going to get this wagyu on. Ooh. Yeah, that is proper. That's tosa for yum. Exactly. <laughs> Nobody's modest like you. looking at... <laughs> Actually, what's your favorite cut? I get asked a lot. I don't actually have a favorite cut. Uh, for eat me, it all. Yeah, eat it all. <laughs> uh, I, for me, it's about 
whatever's best at the time. So whether it's a really delicious fillet with a good sauce or a well-aged rump or an incredible ribeye like we've got here, there's no really best cut for me. Mm. I do like a bit of the old fat in there because for me that's all about the flavor. Mm. So yeah, I suppose anywhere between a rump and a ribeye is probably also on the bone. I love a T-bone or a... It's all good, man. It's all I, had what's, your, what's good I, had I had your T-bone two weeks ago. Woo! That's, that was well aged, that stuff. So, right, so here we go. It's going about two minutes now, guys. I'm going to flip this thing over, two and a half minutes. We don't want to overcook it. If we overcook it, we're going to bugger it up. The idea is that we do not overcook. And Betsy, yes. <clears throat> sometimes, like meat, you get meat, like, especially meat with, the, with that has bone on it. Look at that. Oh, yes. Yo, yo, Look yo. at that. Yeah. It's, it sometimes has a bit of a smell on it. What so so what that? happens, because it's been aged, or dry aged rather, there's marrow in the bone. And if you're going to keep that aging, sometimes that marrow does get a little bit funky. It does, it's like a, it's like a, 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 a hectic French cheese. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, when you've got those really, really stinky cheeses, but they're actually hell of a delicious. Mm. So sometimes if you take your meat and you age it long, it can get a bit like that. What, what do you think is the, 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 the most underrated uh, piece of meat on a, on a cow? Underrated? Oh, great question, eh? Great question. Great question, great question. Uh, well, it depends on how you're cooking, but I suppose low and slow, I love low and slow as much as I love steak. So probably the, the osobuka, the shin. The mm -hmm. So you've got the marrow and the bone and, and that gelatinous uh, meat and once it's cooked down, it is delicious or oxtail how are we looking there guys mm, 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 mm. i hope it's looking good on screen is it looking good on screen it's incredible yeah, excellent so this wagyu cooks quite quickly because um it's got a lot of fat a lot of marbling in it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pickles if you don't mind passing me a little plate there but it's really, really, as I said earlier, when, you, when you're cooking, oh my God, that looks so Ooh, sure, um, very delicious. Yes, thank you. Um, it's really, and you might pass the other one, I think this is almost done. Thanks, boss. It's really important <laughs> that you, yeah, you did an amazing job. <laughs> we, can use, <laughs> we can use it, we can definitely use it on the scullery, pick up. <laughs> I'm just going to take this out of the way because it's super, super hot and we don't want to burn anybody. Oh. Ooh. Looks amazing. Mm, mm, mm. All right. So it's really, really important that you, you rest your steaks afterwards. Because with the cooking process, as I say, you push all the moisture up into the steak. And if you take it straight off the pan and you put it straight onto a plate and you start eating it straight away, what's going to happen is that that moisture is going to end up running all over your, over your plate. And that sometimes happens. We've got all that, that liquid on the plate. That's all the flavor, which by allowing your steak to rest properly, you're allowing all that, that moisture to redistribute through your steak afterwards, which then makes every mouthful more delicious. What's the rule? How long do you let it rest? Five, six, seven minutes. Enough time to make a phenomenal pepper sauce. S five minutes? As yeah. long as. Yeah. You're done in five minutes. Like, that's finished. You can't <laughs> wait. It's you finished. Need somebody to hold you back. <laughs> that's why I brought two players. Hold Siv back. All right. So what we're going to do is, while we've got this pan hot, we're going to use the exact same pan that we cooked the rump in to make a beautiful pepper sauce. Um, so we're going to start off with a few knobs of butter. A few. The, just, <laughs> it's beautiful stuff. A um, few knobs of butter in there and a little bit of oil. Oil. So I like to mix oil and butter because the uh, butter doesn't have a very high smoking temperature, which means it burns very quickly, but the oil helps to stop it from, from, from yeah. burning. We're going to take a few little herbs here. I'm going to use some rosemary, some fresh rosemary, which I love. And we're going to take a 
little chunk of garlic. I'm not going to chop it up. I'm just going to chuck the whole garlic in here because I can fish it out later. This is a good bit hot, yeah. Is that with the is that with the the, the, the peel? With the peel on. Or skin on. Skin on because I'm going to fish it out just now. So we're not going to leave the garlic in that there. Ga that garlic is definitely Zulu. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> and then what we're going to do is with that, we're going to chuck in a bit of black pepper and green peppercorns. So we chuck both in. I use both because for me, the, the black pepper gives the heat and the green peppercorns bring flavor. Uh, we're just going to burn the oils out of that pepper a little bit. Take this garlic out. Whew. Already? Whew. That was quick. I don't want to burn it. When you burn garlic, it gets bitter. So we just want to impart a bit of flavor in there. You can smell the pepper. You can smell that mm. pepper. That's yeah. Yeah. Really mm, chef. Right, so we've got a, a, making a really good sauce while we're waiting for these steaks to rest. The whole idea of making a good sauce is about creating layers and layers and layers of flavor to get the best sauce at the end of the day. So what I have here tonight, I use a bit of garlic, a bit of rosemary, a bit of black pepper, a bit of white, uh, uh, green pepper. You can hear it popping away here. Not everybody does alcohol, but I use it in my cooking. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of red wine into here. And just to give the sauce a bit of complexity, you almost took my arm out there, right? Hey. So we've got a little bit of red wine in there. And we're going to reduce that down. This is still very hot. All right. Once that's reduced down a bit, you can see, see it starts turning a little bit syrupy and running around the pan. Yeah. Skinner, if you don't mind, just give me a hand here. Got you. You can just tilt the pan for me. Fine. Yeah, it's getting nice and hot. There we go. Ah. No, it's not. What did you do? <laughs> <laughs> No fire, no fire, no fire, no fire, no fire. Right, so we're going to reduce that down as well. So it's about building so flavor that upon flavor. What does that keep putting? A little bit of brandy. And then finally, you know great. You know we're going to add a little bit of beef stock. Huh? I'm off that. Yeah, yeah, no. You're not doing brandy anymore. No, <laughs> Scar Scar's not drinking anymore. <laughs> All right, while we wait for this to, to thicken up a bit, it all happens so quickly, huh? We're going to add a bit of cream. And we're going to allow it to simmer. Just we'll simmer slowly thicken. and thicken and reduce. People say that you can't boil cream. You actually can boil cream. You can reduce it down to 10% of its original, original volume. You know, I've been eating at your restaurant for so long. I thought you'd just go... Yeah. No, it was love and passion. Ah, passion. And red grill. Exactly. A new chat? Scott, what have you been up to during this COVID time? Yeah, I've been working hard, eh? Been um, trying to lose some weight. Um, don't, uh, don't be modest. How much have you lost? Tell him. 8, eight, eight, kg. eight yeah. kilograms. Oh, eight kilograms. I need uh, to lose 80. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole human. <laughs> And you've also been involved with uh, Sia and you as well, as well in, uh, working in the townships and that? Yeah, we've been doing some work with a charity called Be The Difference. Very nice. And I've been with another one, Chotwana, Lungilem Chotwana Foundation. So every morning uh, we meet at different locations at nine and the girls do all the cooking and then we help out with whatever needs to be done, uh, packing, uh, distributing, uh, making sure everyone's got distance and all of that kind of stuff. Nice. Yeah, but Silva, I think, has been busy with Brian Abana as well uh, and with uh, Polisi Foundation. And Musi. And Musi's foundation. Yeah, I've seen him very busy. That's very cool. Yeah. These guys have been doing some amazing work during this COVID period. Yeah. Pickles, you haven't done much, eh? <laughs> no, I've done my bit. <laughs> I've done my bit. Uh, Baxi, you might know it. There's an orphanage close in, in the Rondenbosch area called Marsh Memorial Home. Yeah, yeah, I know, you know very well, yeah. yeah. So those poor kids haven't been able to go home since the start. Um, you know, normally they go home or to, to other, um, you know, not originally to their, their folks' home. 
but um, to other homes during during the holiday time. So they missed all of that. They've been locked down Shame, um, in the home now for for this entire time. So I really try to do my bit there. Um, yeah, that's quite a big. That's what that's just Yeah, look, the need is all over. Um, yeah, just trying to yeah, make a small bit for the summer. Man, it's been tough times. All right, well, we're mention? very fortunate. We've been very fortunate to be here and have what we have in front of us. Um, oh, sure. Hi, that was simple. I think it looks like Simmer down nicely. Yeah, I think that's ready to go, huh? What do you guys reckon? I'm going to put some over this. Yeah, it's been longer than five minutes. Aye, aye, aye. <laughs> oh. I'm not going to put any sauce over the wagon because I don't think it needs it. Oaks, please feel free to tuck in and have a To all the vegans, we apologize for what you would do. No animal was harmed during the process of making the steak. Okay, guys. Um, so that, that's it for the cooking of the steaks and the sauces. Um, we do have an amazing uh, Q&A. If you guys are happy to, please uh, ask some questions, leave some comments. Um, we've got some awesome prizes up for grabs. So if you don't leave a comment or ask a question, you're not going to be able to stand a chance to win those prizes. There's a, flat, there's a question there from Karaka. Uh, she says, if you're on a diet, what is the best cut without losing flavor? Great question. You can't ask Baxi that, though. Well, no. <laughs> Hello, Karika. Um, just no carbs, eh? Stay away from the carbs. Yes to meat and fat, no to carbs. Sugar. You drink your carbs, eh, Baxi? I drink my carbs. <laughs> Who we got you? Oh, Mr. Walsh. What is Mr. What did he say? Sir Vax, do you recommend turning your steak <laughs> more often or are you a turn once guy? Ga Actually, I got this. Gavin yeah. Walsh. Have you not been watching this? Have you not been watching? Oh, I got this, I got this, I got this. Thank you. Gavin Walsh. He said in the beginning, he, that's the one people turn into too many times. You want to turn it once, depending on how thick the thing is. You want to once. Who will you try this? And then put it to the side. Leave it for five to seven minutes. Do what you gotta do. And then after five to seven minutes. Hey, listen. I got it. Next one. Run the bus, boy. You read. It's a long one. Actually, can you read that? Mr. Ridley. Yeah, run the bus. Let's see, run the bus. Can, can you read that? No, I can't read that. Uh, blind. That's yeah. what I told you to read. Listen, it's from Donovan. Um, Donovan Ridley. Yes. Yeah, Chef, Chef Greg, in the restaurant game, do you guys render the fact standing upright or is this just something? Us weekend warriors do on the drive. <laughs> are we doing it wrong? Hey, he's those are the mams and toti. Yeah, that's just, yeah, so the whole idea is we t these steaks, we didn't need it because they're not very thick steaks. But for a thick steak, what I would do, Don, when you're quite right, is I'd stick a steak fat side down first, let that steak, uh, the fat render out so you get it beautiful and crispy and delicious. And then for about a minute or two, and then afterwards, turn it on and start to cook it a bit further. Okay, it's been 10 minutes now. Aye, 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 aye. There's the cutlery there. Okay, Master Chef, they don't eat all of it. They always just the corner there. And they the use the finger. Yeah. So they use the, the finger. Yeah. Yeah. Bruce. Mm. I hope Bruce is mm. not watching. Taste this. Oh, You're eating meat, though. I have a laxative. That's proper, that. Oh, that's, that is. Guys, also just to remind you that we've got our um, Father's Day coming up. We've got uh, an awesome uh, gift for your dad. We're going to be doing a Father's Day Steak Masterclass. Obviously, I won't have these clowns with me on that day, but it's going to be a proper full hour where you can purchase a, a, a voucher for your dad. We're going to send to your house. We'll send the, the package, which has got the meat, it's got the seasoning, it's got everything that he's going to need to join me on a, on a private Steak Masterclass. Uh, doing a similar thing that we're doing here, but with a few other different cuts and a few other diff different sauces. How's the steaks, boys? Can't we come yeah. to that one? Hey, uh, I heard that um, you know you can get uh, spices, the Sichuan grill on uh, Tetla. You can indeed. You can get all of their spices and all the the, the, the cooking stuff. It is world class, six gun grill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Loving it. Yo. Please look forward to seeing more steak, uh, uh, not steak class, but more master classes with us and Six Gun Grill. Thank you so much to the DHL Stormers for coming in. Um, and the SAFTA. The, and the, the SAFTA, <laughs> my favorite human, Mr. Mr. Superman here. Um, there are other master classes that we are going to be doing. Um, boys, I don't know if you want to announce the winners. 
on the screen. Don't act like you're giving us that permission because you just can't read it. I'm allowing. <laughs> okay, the first one. DHL Stormers jersey goes to Hazel Fra uh, Africa France 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 yeah, France 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 uh, the six gun glow. Um, Cancel. Gavin Walsh doesn't win anything. Six gun glow. Uh, 2000 Rand hamper goes to Gavin Walsh. You're getting half. You're getting a thousand Rand. Yeah. I'll get the other half. I mean, Scott, I'm going to have a bra. The glow voucher goes to Sabon Sweet. Sjoven? Sjoven Sweet. Hello, Sjoven Sweet. Thank you so much for joining us. You're an absolute star. Awesome. Thanks very much, guys. Thanks very much. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Bexy. Well done. Peace. We're out. Is that any good? Oh, this thing, yeah. This thing.